This is the psionic abilities and science fiction portion of the science fiction lectures. Psionic powers are the collective term for the category of special abilities whose power and control stem from the mind power of a person. The powers are triggered and activated by the will of a person. So you want to stay concentrated because the more that you want to use your power, the stronger they will be. The less concentrated you are in using your power and wanting to use your power, the less strong they will be. And if you lose concentration completely, your power will drop for that moment and you won't be able to use them to their totality so psionic abilities are usually obtained from collision or impact that they experience so if you get hit by a radioactive wave and you wake up feeling really weird in your head um you could have a psionic power Users can effortlessly perform complex mental operations that are drastically beyond the capability of a normal human mankind, making their mental actions and process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses more powerful than the average person. So essentially, you're just a a super thinker. This doesn't necessarily translate into enhanced supernatural or absolute intelligence, as these mental feats are usually automatic and focused to a single trick having little to do with deliberate cognitive thought. So you can think very strongly, but you're not the biggest genius in the world, per se. So what is telekinesis? It is the power to move, manipulate, or interact with objects or matter with one's mind. It's an extrapolation of traditional feat of levitation and is the natural offshoot of telekinesis. While the range of power varies amongst those with telekinetic abilities, characters with such power often use emotions as an energy source and experience fatigue after using the power for an extended period of time. Therefore, if you're angry or if you're saddened, your power will be heightened. And the more that you show emotion, the more you use your power, and that puts a strain on your mind. So you'll feel fatigued, as said. In literature... Telekinesis appeared in SF in 1949, SF being science fiction, of course. The word telekineticist in Flight into Yesterday by Charles L. Harness. In literature, telek is a science fiction novella about telekinesis. Humanity would be divided into two groups, normal human and teleks. The teleks have the power of telekinesis. Carrie by Stephen King, which is a graphic horror novel. Carrie White was a bullied high school girl in an abusive religious household, uses her de- discovered telekinetic powers as revenge on those who bullied her. So telekinesis among other things. The theme of telekinesis is to control your target at a distance. It contains control, utility, and bludgeoning damage. Some may say telekinesis can give the character a sense of security and an act as a defense mechanism. Scanners in 1981, a science fiction horror film, the homeless social outcast Cameron Vale used their telepathic powers to cause a woman to have a seizure before captured by the private military company Consec. Precognition is the power to perceive future events and observe what may happen, from the Latin prey before and cognito acquiring knowledge. The term precognition first appeared in the 17th century, but wasn't common until much later. People may refer to this as the third eye or the sight. There are people now that believe they've experienced or had a precognitive episode themselves, like psychics or maybe tarot card readers. They feel they can see things before they actually happen. And in science fiction, you're more likely to be the person someone gets advice from. Studies suggest that the majority of those who do believe in precognition are those who feel low in control and can act as a psychological coping mechanism. That's why people believe so strongly in psychics and tarot card readers because they believe that they're honestly truly seeing their future and they find a sort of hope and security in knowing their future will be worthwhile. Precognition in sci-fi can be seen in an experiment with time. This is about a man's precognitive and a theory of time. It wasn't accepted by mainstream science, but it has influenced imaginative literature. There's another reference in Too Many Magicians. A character can intermittently see a few seconds into the future. Flash Forward 1999 also has precognitive glimpses, but only one to each member of the world's population. More precognition in sci-fi 
can be seen in The Nightland, 1912, by William Hope Hodgson. A 17th century Englishman is in mental contact with a future representation of himself. Precognitions in Apache and teasingly preserved kind is common element in thrillers of the sci-fi borderline. An example of this would be The Dead Zone, 1979, by Stephen King. Precognitive abilities for some characters are not only unpredictable, but are limited extent. Precognition in Star Wars. Now, obviously, Star Wars is a bigger universe, so people may find this a more relating light. So, Anakin Skywalker used his ability of the Force to form visions of future events. Now, all Jedis were thought to have had the Force, but certain special Jedis used it to their extreme advantage, such as Luke Skywalker and Rey in future movies. His abilities allowed him to know when and where an attack was coming from. As said, other Jedis were also able to form the same things. This acted as a guiding and premonitions or warnings. This helped the Jedi predicting their opponent movement. Jedi soldier ward developed precognition and could see the future actions and choices of others. Empathy in sci-fi. Modeled on the word telepath, the word empath originates in science fiction literature. Empaths can fully interpret the emotions and moods of others and can attack the way someone is feeling because the emotion can sometimes flow through the empath themselves. So basically, if a person feels upset and angry at themselves, an empath would feel the same way and can attack those emotions or counterattack them because they know exactly what's going on. This would allow them to understand introverts or discover their emotion hiding another one. Examples of empathy would be first cited in The Empath by J.T. McIntosh, a story about paranormal beings with empathetic abilities called empaths where their government exploits to oppress workers. The original Star Trek TV series popularized this empathy in science fiction in their episode The Empath in 1968, in which a deaf woman had the ability to heal the wounds of others and experience them. In 1984, Marvel Comics brought the mutant empath who had the power to read, sense, and manipulate the state of the beings around them. This included their intentions, emotional state, and truthfulness. What is telepathy? Telepathy is when users can mentally interact with the mind, consciousness, and thoughts of themselves or others using their minds, thus being able to read and sense another person's thoughts, communicate mentally, and a plethora of other capabilities through non-physical means. Telepathy has three common categories, telepathic communication, telepathic perception, and telepathic manipulation. The most advanced telepaths are not only capable of interacting with the minds or spirits of others, but with reality itself in various ways, such as tapping into psychic astral energies, extending their sense perception, and even their very conscious beyond the limits of their bodies, and potentially even projecting their power into the physical plane. So instead of it just being in your mind, you would be able to show telepathy with other objects not just within others minds and usually a common term that telepathy is used with is twin telepathy where people tend to think that you can communicate with your twin because you were experiencing such similar things at birth however other types of telepathy are telepathic communication which is the ability to transmit information from one mind to another telepathic perception the ability to receive information with one's mind telepathic manipulation which is the ability to influence the minds of others to varying degrees. The history of telepathy. The term telepathy was created in 1882 by Frederick W. H. Myers, a founder of the Society for Psychiatrical Research. The idea of telepathy became very popularized in the 1940s from a magazine called The Astounding Stories of Science Fiction, written by Harry Bates, F. Orland Tremaine, and John W. Campbell Jr. This was a monthly magazine of period adventure stories, that was initially started when William Clayton, a pulp magazine publisher, recommended it to one of his editors, Harry Bates. These stories are often associated with superheroes and supervillains in more modern works. Some examples of these stories were early versions of Superman and X-Men. Telepathy and X-Men. So, Charles Francis Xavier, known as Professor X, is the founder of X-Men. They are named after the initial of his surname. He's the most powerful telepath on earth and has the ability to read minds and project his own thoughts into the minds of others within a radius of 250 miles and can greatly increase this radius with extreme effort. 
So as said before with the psionic powers, you have to be extremely focused and extremely concentrated to be able to use the power to its full capabilities, which can be seen by Professor X as the more concentration, the wider his radius goes to be able to get into people's minds. So when cinched with Cerebro or Cerebra, both part of X-Men, Xavier can connect to every mind on the planet. So a summary of psionic powers, their superpowers that can describe natural abilities that can allow characters to reach peak human potential. Psionic powers are special abilities where the power and control one has is through the mind power of a person. Cognitive abilities are usually obtained due to the collision of an object or an experience they have. And common sign powers seen in science fiction are telekinesis, telepathy, mind control, precognition, and hypercognition. Troubled characters use their abilities as a defense mechanism, while others use them to their advantage against their opponents. Also, brief summary of how they can be used to full capability. Concentration. The more concentrated you are, the stronger your powers get. The less concentrated, the less strong your powers are. So that was the psionic powers portion of science fiction lecture.